The hoopoe is a migratory bird that winters in Africa and in the spring returns to nest in European breeding grounds. When the hoopoes arrive in Provence in early April, they need to rest and feed to strengthen up. With its long, slightly curved bill, five to six centimetres, the hoopoe is adapted to feeding on the ground, both by picking insects off the surface and by probing beneath it. Its longevity is around four years. In Provence, hoopoes frequent a wide range of habitats, such as abandoned fields, olive groves, as well as wild gardens in the vicinity of small villages. When the breeding season starts, the male utters its insistent song in the early morning from a high perch. Males principally sing to attract females. The typical far carrying song only produced by males is a resonant phase which gives rise to its English name, hoopoo. A female listens to a male singing. Females select males that use long refrains in their songs because the male's refrain length is correlated with a measurement of his condition and does not depend on its age. The hoopoos meet on the shortcut lawn and forage for insects. The male feeds the female before mating. Hoopoos are monogamous but pair bonds usually last only for one season. After a successful courtship display, the male goes in search for a nesting site, usually in a natural cavity, such as a tree hole or stone ruin that will involve the establishment of the territory. This male has chosen a fissure in a large branch of an old chestnut tree situated next to a small stream. The female cleans itself on the branch. Both sexes can raise a spectacular fan, the characteristic crown of feathers. During the pre-laying egg phase, males sing from different perches, close to the nest hole. Their songs provide information for the female and other males. When the female begins egg laying, she normally starts incubation between the first and third egg and will remain in the nest. From then on, the male stops singing and regularly goes in search for food to feed the female. Hoopoos frequently clean their bill on a branch after feeding in the nest. The chicks are brooded by the female for between 9 to 14 days. Sometimes she leaves the eggs for a short period and waits on the branch for a meal and once fed, 
returns to the nest to brood. The small stream below the walnut tree is a perfect habitat for all kinds of animals, like this blue metallic damselfly. And a copper demoiselle, which is also a European damselfly, shares the same habitat. A female red-backed shrike is catching a wasp under the chestnut tree. From time to time the female leaves the nest to clean itself of all vermin from the nest. A nightingale sings its song early in the morning. It has now been 17 days since the female started egg laying. She moves to her favourite spot and grooms herself. This time, when the male arrives with food, the female keeps it in her bill and returns to the nest, which indicates that a chick has hatched. The chicks hatch at different times. A thunderstorm is building. And soon it starts to rain. The female leaves the nesting site. When the male arrives with food, he remains on the branch and calls to his mate. When she doesn't show up, shortly he goes to the nest without feeding the chicks. Because the male continues to catch only a few big prey on which to feed his mate, the female must leave the nest in search of small prey for her recently hatched nestlings. When finally the female returns, the male hesitates and goes back to the nest while the female waits on the branch. The female is in her own turn somewhat confused. The male positions himself not far from the female. Finally, she moves towards him and accepts the food.
La femelle s'envole pour rejoindre le mâle et partage désormais avec lui la tâche de nourrir les oisillons. Because the nest site is quickly clogged with droppings and food fragments, the female cleans it from time to time, throwing waste away from the nest. The entrance to the nest is visible from a different angle and a chick's fan can be seen. Almost 20 days have passed since hatching and now the nestlings are so big they can go to the nest entrance and wait for food with their heads poking out. The flight path of the female is from the rear while that of the male approaches from the front. It seems that the male feeds the chicks more frequently than the female, but the female's trajectory is more secretive. A chick is curious and inspects the vicinity of the nest. Hoopoos have well-developed anti-predators' defenses in the nest. The uropigial tail gland of the incubating and brooding female is quickly modified to produce a foul-smelling liquid, and the glands of the nestlings do so as well. These secretions are rubbed into the plumage. This secretion, which smells like rotten meat, is thought to help deter predators as well as deter parasites and possibly act as an antibacterial agent. A second chick shows its bill. The male arrives with food but hesitates for some unknown reason. But finally feeds the chick. The female follows quickly. The following day, the chicks are fed non-stop. As the male approaches the nest, one of the chicks opens its beak, agitated. But when the female does not come, the chick is confused and retreats into the nest. But soon, the male feeds the chick.
This chick is about to fledge. It displays its conspicuous crest. A juvenile common red start lands next to the nest. The common red start shows some affinity to the European robin in many of its habits and actions. The orange red tail, from which it gets its name as start, is an old word for tail, is frequently quivered. Here, a juvenile, recognisable by its smaller bill and crown of feathers, sits next to the male. And flies off first. Early August. Hoopoos migrate to the tropical overwintering areas of Western Africa. But some individuals from Central Europe can overwinter in Southern Europe, like Spain, Italy or Greece. It is generally assumed that hoopoos migrate alone during the night. They might encounter conspecifics on stopover sites, but it seems unlikely that this will greatly affect their migration direction. Hoopoos from Provence migrate via the Iberian Peninsula, the Balearic Islands, or the Corsica Sardinia route to the non breeding areas, and will overwinter more westwards on the African continent compared to those from Central Europe that will take more eastern routes via the Apennine Peninsula and the Balkan Peninsula.